Hi everyone, today I want to talk about pattern match warnings in GHC. Um, GHC offers a number of different kinds of warnings about, um, about how patterns can go wrong. And so uh, this is just sort of a, to walk through these, these different kinds of, uh, of warning messages, what they might mean. And uh, there's a little bit of confusion because as with everything in Haskell, there's a little bit more going on under the hood than you might expect. Um, so uh, up here at the top of the file we see in front of us, there's actually three different warning flags uh, to enable different pattern warnings. Um, and perhaps confusingly, they're in different sort of warning buckets. Um, we have overlapping patterns, incomplete patterns, and incomplete uni patterns. We're going to go through all of these. Uh, so let's start with overlapping patterns. Overlapping patterns are pretty simple. If I have a function bool to int say, I can write f true equals 5, f false equals 6, and then f true equals 7. Um, as you might expect, this last pattern is, is is, is problematic. It's sort of syntactically correct in that um, it's f followed by a bool, but it's it's not really going to work out very well. And so if we look at the error, actually, if I do this, we'll see the error a little bit better. We get pattern match is redundant. Um, and then this comes from overlapping patterns. So that's that that first one. This one's on, on by default. Um, here, this is a pretty obvious one that, that we've that we've encountered it, even if I don't write the true here if I just have blank um, GHC is aware that true and false cover all the possible bools and so we get a redundant match here um, it can be even a little cleverer than that so if I say uh, let's see um, f b where let's try this where I don't know b equals b so here, let's see what we get on this line. So at this point, pattern matches are non-exhaustive. So GC isn't really all that clever, um, right? Because this pattern is actually does cover all possibilities. Every bool equals itself, right? We could imagine some process that goes through each one and tries to compute equality for each. Um, but what, what happens here is that because GHC can't be sure whether this guard is always going to be true. It doesn't actually enumerate all the possibilities here. Then it just says, well, maybe sometimes it won't be true. And, and so, um, uh, so it says that this current pattern is not exhaustive. Um, but let's see, can we get another overlapping pattern here? Um, well, let's see. So if I say now f true equals 10, what do we have down here? Oh, it still says non-exhaustive. Um, and so here we, we get no warnings. It actually probably should have a warning. Um, and that's because again, it doesn't know that this covers all possible cases. If I change this to say otherwise, then uh, then we get these redundant matches again. And that's because now GHC can realize, oh, this first pattern, this pattern matches any possible bool. And otherwise, well, that's always the, the guard that works. Um, what, what I find interesting here is that this guard that works, well, otherwise, is actually just a, um, uh, a constant defined in the prelude that means true. It's not a keyword or anything like that. Um, so we can see this if I print out otherwise and evaluate it. Well, otherwise is just true. Um, and I could actually, I could build a main or something that printed otherwise and it would print out as true. Um, but there's a little bit of magic in GHC that says that if I see the keyword, or not the keyword, excuse me, if I see the variable otherwise um, in a in a pat in a not a pattern guard in a guard, then uh, GHC knows that that catches all possible patterns. That's always true. Um, it turns out that the same is true of true, but not say of not false. See, notice all of those warnings have gone away. So this little blue underline here is an hlint saying, why did you write not false? You should just write true. But of course I wrote not false because I wanted to uh, sort of confuse the, the pattern match checker. Um, okay, so that's so overlapping patterns, right, is when we have a bunch of patterns and at the bottom of it, we realize all the different possibilities are exhausted and yet there are still more patterns. Um, and so that will we'll get um, an, uh, the overlapping pattern warning. Incomplete patterns we've seen already uh, demonstrated here. It's when you have a match that doesn't cover all possible cases. Um, so just to make us even a simpler one, here's a simpler one. Um, let's get rid of this bit down here. So if I say f true equals 10 and I pull up the error, 
uh, warning, excuse me, then pattern matches are non-exhaustive. And that's because I've covered the true case, but I haven't covered the false case. Um, now here, again, sometimes uh, GHC can be a little bit silly. So if let's say um, I have a function that now takes an int and it's n and let's, whoops, uh, let me get rid of that warning. And I say, well, if n is greater than five, then this is 10. If n equals five, this is 15. And if n is less than five, this equals 20. So here we look at this and say, ah, this is exhaustive. n has to be greater than five or equal to five or less than five. But if we, if we um, enable this warning, then we still get the warning pattern matches are non-exhaustive here. And, and that's because GHC isn't clever enough to know the relationship between the greater than and the equals and the less than. Um, and actually, in general, if this were an overloaded function over some ORD instance, maybe someone wrote an unlawful ORD instance that didn't cover the whole space of possibilities. It wasn't a total ordering, essentially. Um, here, we actually know that the input is an int, and so we could imagine some analysis or, or some, some preloaded smarts that say that, that, that greater than, equals, and less than do cover the space. But, but GHC does not have that. Um, and so that's incomplete patterns. Um, then there's this last one, incomplete uni patterns. So let's take a look at that. Uh, so we need something slightly more complicated here. So we're gonna say here, uh, fn equals let o true. Uh, this is, that's sort of a bad example. Um, let nothing equal just five. Well, that's also sort of a bad example. Uh, let's try let just x equal nothing in x. Okay, so what, what have I done here? Well, this nothing could be some other computation. So let's actually do that, make it look a little bit more realistic. So let's say we have a function g goes from int to maybe int. And g, uh, I'm just going to leave it unspecified exactly what g does. And then over here, I can have this be gn. Um, the idea here is that this is a pattern binding. Um, so in this pattern binding, what I want to do is I want to pattern match against just and then bind this variable x so that over here I can use x. Um, this will produce a warning. Uh, this is, um, let's see, pattern matches are non-exhaustive, but this is incomplete uni patterns. And there's a few contexts in Haskell like pattern bindings where there's only one opportunity to write a pattern. I, there's no sort of in a bind in a pattern binding like this, there's no way for me to say, well, just X should do this and nothing should do that. So that makes this a uni pattern. So it's pattern bindings and also Lambda expressions. Um, uh, uh, after the backslash and before the arrow, you can write patterns. Those are also uni patterns. And they're controlled by a different warning flag than patterns generally um, because uh, sometimes these pattern bindings are just really, really useful. And um, back at some point, I think someone wanted to be able to do this without getting the warning, and so they put it into a new warning bin. Um, as we can see up here, for a long time, you had to enable W everything, which enables a whole lot of warnings that you probably don't quite want. Um, and now we've changed it to use to be in W all. So this is, is this might start cropping up as people are migrating code bases uh, to, to GHC 9.2. If you enable W all, then you might get these uni pattern warnings where you didn't before. Um, okay, so this is a little bit of the space of, of these of these pattern matches. There's one last kind of tricky case. This was the case I was talking about sort of in the intro to the video that where things are a little bit harder. So let's get rid of what we have here and I can build up this case. Um, so if I, let's say I have a data type void with no constructors, and then I'm gonna make another data type void like that contains a void strictly. Uh, that strictness annotation is going to be important. And then now if I have a function that goes from void like to int, well, what happens if I do um, f mook vl, uh, nope, nope, I don't want to do that. If I say f blank equals five, can I call this function? Sure I can. Here's an example of calling this function successfully. I can call it with undefined. And if I evaluate that, I get five. And that's because f is not strict. Um, it does not evaluate its argument. So even though this is kind of a funny thing to pass in, I can pass in undefined and everything works out just fine. On the other hand, if I force the left-hand side here 
And I can do that by saying mukvl blank. Now I get a warning. So the warning here is pattern match has inaccessible right hand side, which I think somewhat confusingly is in the overlapping patterns bin, but that doesn't mean it's enabled by default. So that's a good thing. Um, so this inaccessible right hand side means that it's not that the whole pattern match is redundant. Right? This pattern match does something. It forces the argument. It makes the, the f uh, function strict. So it's not that the pattern match is redundant, but GHC can figure out that this um, once we've evaluated this argument, we're that, that evaluation is never going to terminate. That's always going to diverge with some kind of exception. So in practice, the 5 will never get returned. Um, and so it's somewhat in between a, 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 um, sort of an overlapping pattern and, um, uh, well, it's not quite an overlapping pattern because it does something. Um, but it's, 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 you know, we still want to have a warning here because we're still never going to get to the right hand side. I said the strictness annotation here is important. If I remove the strictness annotation, well, now the warning goes away because once again, I have a perfectly good way of calling F. I can call mukvl undefined. Um, and we get five just to prove to you that that's happening. If I change this, we'll now see six. Um, and, and so that strictness annotation matter there. Another way we could accomplish this is if I do bang underscore here, um, we'll need to enable bang patterns. Um, and let's see, oh, haha, this still doesn't have a warning because this thing here, bang will evaluate the mukvl, um, uh, but no further. So now if I put that there, now we get our warning back. Um, so that gives us the, um, uh, the little range of, of interesting details about warnings in GHC. I hope this has been interesting for you. Thanks very much for watching. Bye.